as my um, experience deepens and my understanding of why I do this at all deepens, I realize that I am quite content to work here in the American Southwest. And, and it's because I, I love this landscape. I love everything about it, the weather, the geology, the remoteness, how uh, little populated it is, the presence of native peoples, uh, both prehistorically and also in a contemporary way. Um, I feel as though I could easily work multiple lifetimes here and still not exhaust the inspiration that I feel from it. So why go anywhere else? <laughs> Flying and the, the wonder of it all is so much like uh, a dream. When you wake up from it, it seemed so vivid and so real, and yet after it's over, it just dissipates into nothing. And you tell somebody about it and all they can really do is say, well, if you, if you say so, sure. <laughs> but with a photograph, you can actually show, yes, this is what it looked like. and. Uh, so to share that in common with the Lindberghs is, is truly uh, wonderful. My role in this exhibition, um, Oblique Views, was uh, uh, a result of the collaboration between Archaeology Southwest and uh, myself. Archaeology Southwest became aware of the Lindbergh photographs that were made in 1929 in this area. And it was their idea to find those, examine them, and then to uh, re-photograph the best of the lot. We got uh, some photographs of the Lindberghs from Chaco Canyon, and that was a place that was relatively easy for me to get to and to photograph um, at that time. And so I did uh, a few tests, and we were both uh, uh, very delighted with the results that we saw and realize that there would be some promise here. And there are, there are certain challenges inherent in doing any kind of re-photography from the air, and it's obvious what they are. I mean, you can't find the exact spot on the ground that a photograph was taken from 100 years ago or whatever. Um, and yet I was willing to uh, engage the, the challenges, and I had the tools and skills to do it. With such a slow flying, low-flying aircraft that was so maneuverable, I was able to spend the time necessary to find the, you know, theoretical point in space from which um, an old photograph might have been taken and to, and to duplicate it. And it just was a matter of photographing and then re-photographing and then re-photographing until all the parameters of matching got closer and closer and closer. And, you know, a lot of it just boils down to being able to fly slowly enough to have the time to do that as precisely as possible and to not spend a fortune while doing it. And I was able to, to bring that to the project. Uh, you know, simply finding a place <laughs> from the air can really be a journey uh, of its own. And the feeling of success that hits is almost unspeakable uh, when you arrive to a general location and you're looking all around and you're saying it must be here somewhere and your eyes settle down and you resolve more and more detail and all of a sudden something jumps out and you realize oh ha, look that's it and the world just transforms in that instant because you bring now everything that you've carried with you in terms of your knowledge what you've been told about it what you've heard about it to the thing that you're seeing there right in front of you and you're moving around it in three dimensions and and beholding it in its in its suchness as it is there on the landscape and you got there personally you navigated to that place in the universe where that only place where it is I have really enjoyed working with the Lindbergh images. Uh, it's partly because I enjoy working with images per se, and then to work with aerials and aerial images of such significance, and images that I have such a personal um, involvement with, both the, the subject matter, the location, and also the process, 
um, it's just been uh, a, a multi-dimensional <laughs> delight for me to work with the Lindbergh images that that must be said and I feel as though I can almost inhabit um, their experience as I look at them. Photographically, it's a whole different animal because they already found the photograph. And my task is not the imagining. My task is to recreate the, the circumstances and, and the position from which they made it. And the task is to get that as precise as possible. And the success is simply evidenced in the photograph itself as to how close the match is. Whereas for them, all they needed to do was see it, or find it, let's say, see it, I'm talking about a ruin, for example, and get the camera out and successfully make the photograph. And they could come home with that one shot and say, this is it. This is what we did today. And uh, for me, um, I know what that process is like and I enjoy it myself, but it, it's really creatively a whole different enterprise to duplicate someone else's view and to get that just precisely right. Flying itself is, in essence, experiential. And when you do it, you engage in an activity that is not normal for human beings to do. And while you're doing it, you're aware of that. There's a certain sense of risk and danger and um, that you don't belong here. <laughs> uh, and so to retrace the invisible steps of someone who did that many decades previously with much less uh, advantage and convenience as what modern pilots have and to use a photograph to establish that you are in fact at the place that they must have been at the same time of year uh, when they made their photograph there's a there's a certain feeling that comes over me uh, it's kind of a, a chill or, or a shiver um, that everything has come into focus and that I am precisely at that place and that moment. It's also uh, a delight to feel the raw, um, the raw inherent value of what they were doing. At, from this remove, this point in time, looking back, every image they took is just inherently precious because it's so old and it's from a world that we will never be in again. There is no one um, identity of these places that they have. They are as complex and multifaceted in their character as any human being is. And anyone who has lived in an intimate relationship with another human being knows that you never get to the bottom of understanding who that person is. And I feel that way about these locations. I never feel like I get there in terms of really understanding what this is. And part of it is just the three-dimensional complexity of a canyon system like Canyon de Chez. You can look at it on a topographic map or now on, on Google Earth, but until you actually go out in space and have that freedom to move around into any vantage point that you choose or imagine, uh, you don't fully appreciate just how complicated <laughs> the canyon system is in, uh, in those three dimensions. And when you begin to factor in um, the elements of geology and ecology and all the dimensions of human occupation, uh, contemporary and prehistoric signature of, of human usage of the landscape, from the air, uh, you realize that you basically have uh, an, an in infinite subject in front of you. Lately, I've been working with the Lindbergh photographs, uh, just printed out as simple black and white copies on a letter size sheet, eight and a half by 11, and I have them in a, in a uh, binder in sheet protectors, and I can just leaf through the binder to the different images that I'm rephotographing. And I have that propped in the cockpit so that I can constantly be looking back at it. And as I get deeper and deeper into the process of rephotographing, I'm finding that I, 
uh, I kind of decipher their image into uh, more and more nitty gritty el elements of geometry. The location that I photographed most recently for the project was the Santa Clara Pueblo. And uh, so I very recently went through all these steps of, of studying that image carefully in my studio before I ever left the ground and deciding on roughly what time of day that I would want to be there and uh, what direction from the Pueblo I would need to be and how high I would be. And, and it was, interestingly in that case, the answers to those questions all were such that it felt like um, a very, very minimal intrusion on the, the world of the Pueblo itself as it is today, which was definitely a concern in, in doing the re-photograph. Um, other times, like photographing downtown Santa Fe, there are just so many variables that are so evident and that everybody's familiar with, various roads and buildings and street configurations that there's, there's really not a lot of forgiveness in the, in the image. You've got to get it pretty much just right, or it's going to be quite obvious that you didn't. And so um, then in cases like that, I do work uh, harder at it. Just as the Lindbergh images were a moment in time that has long since passed, I have the understanding that the photograph that I make today will someday also be just a moment in time that will have long since passed. And to that sense of, of creating a, a, an artifact from this time and this place uh, feels like a very small contribution uh, to make uh, in history. And it's definitely established by the fact that the Lindberghs did it so many years ago and I'm just following you know, in, in suit. Uh, I was standing on very tall, broad shoulders and simply adding one more uh, piece of information to the story. And uh, I found that very, uh, very rewarding and very, very challenging. Any photographic effort depends to some degree on the audience that it has for its, uh, its ultimate, you know, true value. And so this is a very special opportunity to have um, a body of work that's so old, of such old and important places, and uh, to offer something new that, that enhances it, um, and to have the audience pretty much ready-made and just already sitting on the edge of their seats to see what is it going to be? What does the modern version of this image look like? And that was my role to uh, create and, and supply that to the project. And, and it reminds me that in many ways, um, no photograph really uh, has much of a life until it's responded to by a viewer. And in, in this case, you know, how wonderful to have so many people ready to look at these images and that together, you know, individually, the Lindbergh image or my image may not be anything special as photographic images, but together, um, and especially in some, in whole, they become something quite exceptional to experience that all together and to have that to offer to the general public and, and to contribute to the, the flow of history has been uh, a truly unique and wonderful opportunity in, in my career.